Hi there. In this video, we're going to take a look at the grid settings and how utilizing the different grid settings can make your life so much easier when it comes to editing. The settings for the grid are all around this area here. So there's two important drop down menus, and then of course we can use the quantize settings to define the grid. So out here in the project window, you can see we've got grid lines in between the bars. Now, if we have snap, and this is the snap button here turned off, then we can move an event anywhere. We don't need to worry about those grid lines. As soon as we turn the snap button on, then this event is locked in to whatever grid settings we have. And at the moment, the grid settings are set to a bar, so I can only move it onto the start of every bar. Now the first menu we're going to have a look at are the grid settings. So if we click here on this drop down menu, you can see all the different settings. If I move down to grid relative mode, I can only pick up an event and drag it to exactly the same starting position in the next bar. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to show you with something starting on the bar. So I'm holding down command, I'm just moving this to a random place. Now if I just pick up on it, you can see that it's moving it to exactly the same point just in the next bar or the previous bar. The next setting we're going to have a look at is the events setting and that means that I can move this anywhere, but as soon as it gets close to the start or the end point of another event, it magnetically locks into place. So it's really nice if we want to align different events. The shuffle setting is more something you'd see in video editing. So this means that if I move an event to a certain place, it's going to shuffle the other one along. So if I pick up on this event and drag it to the left, the original event is shuffled to the right and the event that I've moved is put in its place. In the cursor setting, we can pick up on an event and drag it anywhere and release it and it will stay there. But as we move towards the cursor, the start and the end points will lock in to the cursor. Down the bottom, we've got a combination of settings. So for instance, grid and cursor means that it will lock on to the grid unless I go near my cursor, at which point the start and the end points will lock onto the cursor. The events and cursor setting means it will magnetically lock onto the start and the end of events and the cursor. Grid events and cursor will obviously lock on to all three. So I would suggest leaving grid as your default, but there's lots of different options there. Over in the next menu, we can define what we want these objects to be snapping to. So we can change from bar to beat. So now I can lock this event onto the beat. If I move down, we get to an interesting setting, the use quantize setting. And you can see my grid has changed considerably. So my grid is now based on the settings in my quantize window. As I change the quantize settings, my grid settings also change. And now I can move my events and they'll lock on to the resolution that I have selected in the quantize window. The adapt to zoom setting is a recent addition to Cubase. I'm using the computer keyboard G and H key to zoom in and out and the grid resolution's changing. So now using the adapt to zoom setting, we can lock these events on to whatever resolution we have set in the zoom. So you can just zoom in if you want less lines and then zoom out for more lines. If I right mouse click up here in my timeline, I can change from bars and beats to seconds. And now there's a new drop down menu up here. And instead of bars, beats and quantize and zoom, I can now choose a millisecond setting. So there's a number of really useful settings here and which one you choose will depend on the application. So for instance, you can even lock into a frame rate, which is really important for people who are working with video because bars and beats don't really mean anything at all. So you can choose from a number of different grid settings. If you're working with music, the most important thing is usually going to be bars and beats. So that's pretty much where I would leave my settings. Our grid settings in the project window can affect our editors in the lower zone. So I've double clicked on this event and I'm going to turn on warping. So as soon as I turn it on, you can see that grids appeared. And now if I pick up on this, it's going to lock my movement straight into place depending on the grid settings I've got. So it's important to make sure that you've got a really firm understanding of how to effectively use this grid because as soon as you figure it out, it's going to make your life a whole lot easier. And that's not just working out in the project window. That's working with pretty much every editor that you have available to you inside of Cubase. Thanks for stopping by. Please give us a thumbs up if you've learned something and subscribe to the Cubase YouTube channel for plenty more videos just like this.